Hi everybody, Adrian Plus here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And what a hot week. <laughs> it was so hot, oh, I know. What a hot week. And um, this is um, Sounding the Shallows. That metaphor is getting stretched even further now. <laughs> but it is number 59. Yeah, and if ever there was a week when it would be quite nice to be dabbling around in the shallows, nice I think it would be shallows, this week, yeah. really. Yeah. We've, had, we've had a few emails, and obviously a lot of people are beginning to face new things now, and... That creates all its own confusions and stuff, so we, we'll get to those next yeah. week, won't we? And, and yeah, and some excitement as well. Yeah, some excitement as well, So and, and, you know, each week we think, well, this is a significant week, but this is a significant week, isn't it? Because on Monday in... Yes. Uh, in the UK, it was Freedom Day, which didn't feel terribly free, but it was Freedom Day, which means no legal restrictions. Mm -hmm. And um, also, starting actually formally today, yeah. are the Olympics. Yeah, well, I, we, we love the Olympics. Um, and the, a very good start. I mean, yesterday we watched England. Uh, I beg their pardons. UK. Great Britain um, beating... Chile. <laughs> I wonder how many people are going to say, no, no, Great Britain beat Chile. And also Sweden beating America, which was an incredible result. It was 3-0. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, it's uh, it's all starting at the moment and uh, new challenges all over the place. And our favourite, well, I don't know if it's our favourite, but it seems to be a, a verse that's followed us, hasn't it, through our last 35, 40 years is the one from the Gospel of John where... Jesus says the truth will set us free. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember years ago, someone who probably ought to know told me that that word freedom could be translated um, word truth. as readily as um, uh, truth. reality. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Truth, yeah. Sorry, as reality. And um, I think that... That might be the the key, really. I was trying to think about it. The liberation is all right, mm -hmm. but it it's actually um, experience suggests it's the gateway to. Mm. I hesitate to say this. Whatever needs to happen, <laughs> and again, experience suggests that not all of that is necessarily going to be what we would choose. And Jesus was the one of the best examples of that the if you read the, the account of Gethsemane mm. the emotional mm. chaos of Gethsemane mm. and making choices and gritting your teeth and hoping for things you don't really think are going to happen mm. and and eventually finally crucially uh, majoring on relationship mm. in the end mm. that's what took him through mm. so yeah we're free, but who knows? Yeah, I mean, I actually find that, I've always found it helpful because it's so easy to think of truth as one of these sort of lovely words that float around, truth will set you free and reality will set you free. It's really where we are at the moment. I mean, yes, we've had Freedom Day and uh, the truth of that, the reality of that is that it isn't simple. It's not going to be simple. Just like you said, Adrian, it's going to involve choices because now the responsibility is ours. Mm. And before, it was formally decided for us where we could go. I mean, we were talking, weren't we, about just how strict it was at the beginning, yeah. where if you went more than, you know, a few hundred yards away from your home, you panicked, that yeah. there was some sort of somebody lurking in a hedge mm. to tell you off and Isn't send it you odd home. No. If you're wearing a mask, you might be the outsider in certain situations. I really hope not. I hope but not. Yeah. I, but I think I we'll go on wearing masks when we in in um, a number of situations. Well, we will. Yeah. We will. But I also know that there will be a temptation if you've forgotten it and all those sort of yeah, things. That's right, yeah. But I was thinking, and it was something, because we were at Scargill last week, weren't we? And one of the things we were thinking about was that kind of movement into freedom. And, Scargill uh, is the place where, in Yorkshire, where we sometimes go and work, yeah, by sorry, the way. Sorry, I should have said Just that. Just so you know. Yeah. But um, we were remembering uh, years and years ago when we were in Australia, and uh, we did that talk, if you remember. We, we were taken to a place that, as far as we were concerned, was going to be for people working with people with 
various forms of learning difficulties That's right, and in yeah. fact discovered that we were speaking to the people with learning difficulties as well as their That's carers right, yeah, and yeah, people yeah. who yeah. work with them and that was really complicated the first session but the second session if you remember was just after breakfast and we were much more confident so we were really mm. bewildered when at the very back of the room, and there were quite a lot of people there, we heard this man shouting at the top of his voice, it's too long, it's uh, too long, we don't just start It's too long. We don't usually get crystal clear critiques no. like that, do we? Two minutes after no, we start. But he, if you remember, he was pointing into his mouth yeah. and then he was ushered out and we carried on not really knowing what had happened. Then afterwards, uh, the person who'd brought him to this centre was explaining to us what had happened and what in fact had happened was this man is in his 40s and he'd lived at home hadn't he with his mum and dad all his life and he'd been taught some really good strict rules yeah. in order to help him necessary to rules necessary yeah. rules yeah. and one of them was that if you don't brush your teeth immediately after breakfast well what he'd been told is your teeth will fall out and this was the first time he'd been away from home so the first time he was exploring a new world a world of of a different freedom to the freedom he'd known and he was terrified because immediately after breakfast there was us standing up spouting on when he should have been cleaning his teeth and we were talking with his carer about the fact that it's quite a common experience for people who are just beginning to explore what it is to be... The rules were good, mm. but now they were going to be not always followed immediately, followed in a different way. Yeah. Things will be different and the responsibility for cleaning his teeth would become would be his. his. Yeah. yeah, that was a big difference, wasn't it? It was a huge yeah. difference, yeah. really. Yeah. And uh, And, you know, I heard somebody... On the radio i think it was just yesterday saying that maybe we need to think of our own responsibility as being fueled by kindness you said about mm. the masks is it kinder to wear one because you're protecting other yeah. people etc etc yeah we mentioned didn't we a while ago the lady in south africa who had become a christian and we asked what difference it made and she said i clean behind the furniture as yes, well now right. which is uh really is the point isn't it and i remember also a story I've often told coming from London on the train and reading in the paper about a, um, a footballer who was renowned for his fair play. I don't think he'd ever been booked and he'd retired and suddenly announced he'd actually, he'd been much more skillful at covering up mm -hmm. his misdemeanors mm -hmm. during play. And I was so shocked. Anyway, I, I, I had this in the back of my mind. We arrived back at Polgate and I got off the train and... Um, I was near the back of the train and I really wanted a taxi and there were always a small number of taxis and people kind of, uh, there weren't huge crowds but they went off to the taxis and there was just one left, I could see it <laughs> and between me and the taxi was an elderly lady obviously struggling to make her way to the taxi and I'll tell you what happened, what went through my mind, I thought I can get in that taxi mm -hmm. and I think I thought she probably doesn't want a taxi. Yeah. She's just she's just going past the taxi, where the taxi is, and then I'll get the taxi. And I ran past her, or, or hurried past her, I didn't need to run, and got to the taxi. And all I can say is, it is as though a l very large red card was held <laughs> up and somebody said, that is a foul. Mm. And mm. Um, I... I uh, almost had my hand on the taxi uh, handle by then mm. and uh, I, I I did give up my taxi mm. because I couldn't mm. I couldn't face the ref mm. uh, having p committed the, the in a way that's a pretty relevant story because there's going to be continual temptations now to do what we want because we want it yeah, and our justification true. is going to be that that's what we want you know, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. and, and that will be our motivation. And we're going to have to do a bit more checking, I think, really and truly. Well, of course, as I said, the other big thing is the start of the Olympics. And I was thinking about the fact that rather like the Freedom Day, in a way, as soon as you think about the Olympics, well, certainly for us, and I mean, we're not sporty. Well, you used to be. I never was. But, but a lovely glow comes. It's the Olympics. And yeah. it's kind of a symbol of the best of absolutely creme de la creme 
of everything of track of field of swimming and all the rest of it mm. and it kind of unites the world because that everybody can be involved and the feeling it's sort of free and fair but of course we know that the mm. truth is much more complex than that the there reality pressures, yeah. is much yeah. more complex i mean we know that um well i'm just trying to think of a few things i mean we know for example some of the gymnasts have talked about actually being abused during their childhood in order mm. to get the very best performances the mm. pressure the national pressure yeah. the um temptation to cheat yeah. i mean that's yeah. another one isn't yeah. it the whole drugs thing there was a film about the the um the british um olympics wasn't there the other the other night oh yes and uh, well, the, the, yes the huge huge pressure on huge people huge pressure to, to huge amount of money but you've still got that personal responsibility to train, to put yeah. everything first, to resist temptation yeah. and to learn how to overcome disappointment and all the rest of it, you know, pushing your boundaries. Mm. And, 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 but I think importantly, a lot of the very best would say it's discovering the way to run their race to yeah, run to your own their race. best ability yeah. their yeah. own race yeah. or to dive their own dive or, or yeah. whatever it happens to be that finding the thing that spurs them into mm. being the best that they yeah. can be yeah and all those people waiting to see what you what you do how you do yeah yeah i remember a very silly story we used to tell or i used to tell because you don't tell silly stories do you because I'm not very good at them. The, well, I do nor am I. Nor I, am do I but it, it was about an inflatable boy. Yes. And um, he went to um, a school, and his parents were also inflatable. You understand that? Got yes, it so I, far. I've got it so far. Adrian. He went to a school where the headmaster, fortunately, was also inflatable, and that meant that there was a lot of sympathy there. Uh huh. And they liked him. Uh -huh. He was a good lad. This inflatable boy. Mm. Um. And one day he seemed to go wild. Mm. Uh, I don't know what exactly what happened, but he went into the, uh, the... It was called to the headmaster's office. And right. he went in. And the headmaster said, I I don't know what to make of you. Um, what had he been doing? I, I said, I don't know what to make of you. Um, and the boy said, what, what have I done? And he said, well, you've let your parents down. <laughs> you've let yourself down <laughs> you've let me down mm. but the worst of all is that you've let yourself down <laughs> well he'd run around with a pin yes he'd just... <laughs> run around with a pin inflating, uh, deflating everybody it was a hilarious <laughs> story I had to be there it really hasn't got a moral no. hasn't got a moral but maybe that I mean within within this new freedom uh, within the context of Jesus very positive commandments love god love your neighbor and care about letting them down mm. and run your own race mm. this is the great paradox of christianity is law christian living is that you're running the spirit's race but you're also running your own race yeah that's right um, and it's very hard to know quite how to how to put that i mean over the last 35 years from the beginning actually um, I've been making choices when I write or sometimes speak about, I will have both of us have at times, saying things that just step outside the boundary of what people would be used to hearing. Mm -hmm. And the fact that what you say is actually the truth doesn't actually make much difference because people get set and comfortable within uh, things that perhaps are not appropriate or not, mm. or, or less meaningful than they think they are. Mm. And when someone says, but this is how it actually is, mm. because you found your own voice. And I, I remember years ago, someone saying to me, you know, if you want to be a writer, you've got to find an idea. Mm. And mm. just going around looking at what everybody else has said and written mm. isn't the idea. Well, that's interesting, wasn't it? Didn't Haven't you once talked about Lewis saying that, you know, people strive to be original oh, to I have their own leather on about it all the time yeah, yeah. And, and that if you tell the truth 
you if will it's your race, original. if yeah. it's your story. Yeah. And so often if you think about it, Adrian, and I think we're going off tangent a bit, but if you think about this word testimony, um, mm. you often hear people saying, I haven't got anything to say, I'm just me, I'm pretty useless. And actually yeah. so often they're the extraordinary people who are hanging on despite, not because. Yeah. And they have a great story to tell because it's their story. Mm. Whether their story is, I managed to get up in the morning. Yeah. Um, whatever. Well, it that's is. right. As somebody once said when he was interviewed, uh, um, what what does Christianity do for you? And he said, I feel like getting up in the morning. Ah. And I think I think there was a frisson of um, acknowledgement yeah. from the crowd of people who yeah. were there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's not it's not easy that no. um, that use of freedom because you suddenly think, but if I'm wrong, mm. and people have come to trust me what I say and what I write uh, what are they going to what are they going to what, what are they going to think well, well they went, yeah I, you know but it's, the interesting I've always thing is if you're thinking of the Olympics and you're thinking of running races and all the rest mm. of it it means that you just have to keep going back to the groundwork don't you to make sure that you've not sort of wandered off somewhere in doing yeah. your own running your own race way away from the proper training if you like that I, is quite costly and day to day and, right, yeah. and all the rest of it i think the, the the time helps time helps doesn't it i mean maybe you grow up a bit mm -hmm. we were in the in the town the other day and one of our sons pointed to a, a plaque on the wall and it uh it was one of those victorian memorial plaque things oh yes and on the top <laughs> in tiny letters it said to the glory of god tiny letters <laughs> and then lower down in huge letters at the man who was responsible for yes. putting this building up yeah. or something yeah. and i think that's that's the death <laughs> of christianity working mm -hmm. is if you if you want to be the one who does it then you go and do it somewhere else but yeah. if you said about people doing a testimony there the only there is only one kind of testament, testimony, and there are two aspects of it. One is that it is true, and the other is that you are testifying to what God does. Mm. You are not testifying to what you do. There are or many, to what you wish he'd done wish when he done hasn't. The, yes. There are many subtle ways of pretending you're talking about God, and I've done them all in my time, <laughs> but yeah. I know them now, and mm. I think it's really important mm. that the name at the top is the right one and mm. it's in the biggest letters mm. to use a rather blunt metaphor yeah. <laughs> yeah so i mean coming back to these races as soon as you start thinking about the race that you're talking about the one where you're trying to make god in the big letters and you in the little one you're very hampered really especially if you bring jesus into the equation because it's almost like a three-legged race i mean on the one hand you've got your own weakness yeah. and the things that are going to trip you up and on the other is the sort of kindness and care that means that you may well have to keep going back yeah. to help people who've fallen over you're not going to get big prizes in human terms unless you decide to put a plaque up with big letters for your name. Yeah. Whether it's yeah. actually a plaque or it's actually the way you're living, I think. I think that it it is all about perspective, isn't it? Um, the the two the widow with the two mites, or I don't know if she was a widow, the elderly lady with the two mites, um, is e exemplary, and Jesus said. They're worth more than the whole of what everybody else yeah. has put in. Yeah. She's put in more than anybody else. And Jesus didn't really deal in metaphors in instances like that. Mm. In some mystical sense, mm. I think they were worth more <laughs> in, in the world where it counts. Yeah. And when you, so on that rostrum, when, she might well be up there. She in the might middle. well be. <laughs> and when you turn to go and do something little mm. that somebody needs, and it gets in the way of doing something that might have made you look a little more special. Mm. Um, you're actually uh, doing something very valuable and mm. really must remember that. Or I know I must. I don't know about anybody else. So, yeah, and um, as the challenges come and as things maybe open up, I turn back, and I know you do to the things that keep us steady and one of the things we also read out last 
week at one point when we were working with people was that bit from Hebrews, wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, which yeah. You've got there, well, we it? love this bit. <laughs> never tire. I never tire of hearing <laughs> it. We have a great high priest who's gone into heaven, and he is Jesus, the Son of God, and that's why we must hold on to what we've said about him. Jesus understands every weakness of ours because he was tempted in every way that we are. I mean, that's what it says. He was mm. tempted in yeah. every way that we are, but he still did not sin. So whenever we are in need, we should come mm. bravely before the throne of our merciful God. And there we will be treated with undeserved kindness and we will find help. It's very hard for people to believe that, I think. But that permission to be looked after as you deal with the stuff you've screwed up with yes. is really, really valuable. <laughs> And I don't know how I would survive without it, no. to be absolutely and honest. And I mean, that will keep you running, won't it? Keep yeah, you going. Yeah. Keep you. Anyway, enjoy yeah. the Olympics. We love the Olympics, yeah. especially the athletics <laughs> is our favourite bit. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.